Hello, and welcome back to The Lair. In today's video, we're covering a supplemental resource which I think might have changed my life. The D30 Sandbox Companion. I bet some of you guys have heard of this before, but it's a book with incredible tables and charts to make sandboxing a lot easier. Because, well, sandboxing should be easier to run. A lot of people who play our hobby, who run our games, want to do it, but it's difficult to find resources and supplements out there that can actually make this easier. We want quality over quantity, ideas that will improve our game significantly without too much effort. And honestly, I went through this book on live stream and it just blew me away with the variety of charts and the amount of detail that it has. Everything from rolling for adventures, hex mapping, creating cults and developing towns and keeps as well. I've never seen a book so sophisticated yet so cheap. Most quality books out there are $40 to $60 or maybe $20 to $40 for a PDF. This was like five bucks. It was It's really that cheap. My only issue is that I don't own a 30-sided dice. So I looked up on Amazon and found that actually, yes, there are some people who sell 30-sided dice. So that's okay. I mean, fortunately, either way, I run my games online. I can use a virtual roller. But for those of you who don't, you know, there are obviously options out there if you actually want to buy a dice that's that big. <laughs> I don't know what else you'd use it for, but, you know, very, very interesting. Just a forewarning, I'm not going to go through the whole book today, but instead I'm going to go through the things that really stood out to me. Um, if you'd like to see everything that's in the book, I recommend just buying the book from drive for rpg The link will be in the description. The first part of the book that really stood out to me was mapping out hexes. And I find myself as a bit of a hex enthusiast, but this really blew me away. I never really understood the idea of having two types of hexes on top of each other, small and big. Um, but this actually was, you know, pretty interesting. I think it's super useful for grinning out larger play areas while still allowing me as Dungeon Master to zoom in and zoom out whenever I need to. The worksheets in themselves are very tidy and easy to fill out. The large hex would be six miles and the smaller hex would be one mile, just for reference. There is a place for noting key locations, including towns and monster lairs, and there's also room for multiple wandering monster charts. This is for hexes that have obviously different biomes or different terrain types in them. For example, you know, half the hex could be plains and half could be hills or swamp or something similar. You'd probably want to have a different monster chart for each representing the locale, right? There's also a worksheet for settlements, which allows you to grid out and key various vendors and shops, as well as other information on the government types, settlement threats, and even how they react to outsiders, which I think is very, very cool. The NPC record sheets are next, and they're pretty detailed. I like them. Um, I think they're good. You know, you can, you can note out their stats, weapons, spells, magic items, and all their background notes too. This is the kind of thing that you can just shove in your binder and it would be really, really useful to have on hand. The next part of the book is the Adventure Generator, and this is really the meat of the book. This is one of the meats, I would say. This is chicken, and I spent a good deal of time actually, you know, playing around with this. Under Major Goal, there are Discover Secret, Prevent Invasion, Stop Raids on Location. These are highly exciting adventure goals, but you don't really see too often in many games. I sometimes find it difficult to come up with a good adventure for my players. And reading this chart and rolling dice, I don't know, it just felt different. What I like about a lot of OSR resources is that they don't normally tell you what to actually do. They just give you an outline, an idea, something to structure your game with, but they actually expect you to come up with the idea for your adventure, for your whatever you're doing yourself. And I like that it's open-ended. You know, and whilst you can roll some really weird pairings, I rolled one on, actually, on live stream actually, and despite how odd it was, I was still able to make sense of it. I've already decided that I'm going to be using this generator for my campaigns moving forward, so if you're one of my players, you're lucky. Look how lucky you are that I'm going to be using this. This is great. Um, and, you know, obviously, like, my, my campaign is based around the Barra Maze, but that doesn't stop me from like having some of these quests tie into that, tying into the swamp. It gets my players actually more invested in the area anyway. So I think it's good. 
foraging and hunting is the next thing that struck me and whilst i find it interesting i do think it's a little bit overcomplicated for my liking this is one of those things that i have to read like six times to understand you know, maybe I'm just a bit of a layman, but a lot of these advanced books don't really seem to communicate ideas in a very simple, concise way. I think that's just a very OSR concept, though. But based on your location and the time of year, there are formulas for determining access to forage foods and hunting as well. I do like systems that encourage survival aspects, but I feel like a lot of players and dungeon masters don't really care for it, especially modern players. They don't play these games to hunt deer and collect berries they just want to slay dragons and cover vast riches save the princess etc i try to incorporate survival aspects into my game as frequently as i can without being intrusive to the gameplay like um, finding a nice balance i personally love the idea of hunting and searching for places to rest you know building temporary structures and defenses and to be fair to my players they do seem to be open to the idea I was considering making an extensive video talking about survival and the uh, ways that you could use it to spice up your game, but I didn't really get a lot of positive feedback requesting that, so I haven't really done it yet. If you'd like me to, give the video a like and let me know in the comment section below. The next section is about hex mapping, and it's kind of weird to me that the hex worksheets are pr pretty far up and yet this is quite far down. It'd be easier just to have everything together, but it's not really that big of a deal. A lot of D&D books have this issue. There are charts for natural features and phenomena. You just roll for every small hex within the big hex, and if you roll a six or less on the D30, you'll have a feature in the hills terrain type if you're doing the, the hill hex. I like the fact that different terrain types have different chances of uh, natural feature being present. It's a little bit more complicated, but I do like it. I think it's very, very cool. I did have somebody join my stream who said, why not use a D20? I don't know, man. I, honestly, guys, might be worth looking into that yourself. I don't know. But it D30 looks pretty cool, you know? It's, it's not really a big deal to me. You also get to roll for potential settlements, and it's based on regional density. So if the hex has a low population density, you can pick unsettled or desolate. If there are more people, then you can go with frontier, scattered, or dense. I made a hex on Photoshop, and I followed the rules of the various charts in this book, and what I ended up with, as you guys can see on the screen, is a pretty cool region. Perhaps a few more settlements than I expected, but all in all, it was pretty good, and I actually think I'm going to start using this for my games. There's also the generators for ruins, temples and even cults and pilgrims as well i had fun with the uh, the cult generator and i rolled up this alliance of the secret lich gain servitude of others and sleep suspended by hooks pretty weird i know i think i'm gonna go with like a hellraiser vibe for it there's also a magic places generator too, which I was surprised to see. I haven't really got a lot of cool magical locations in my campaign as my campaign is pretty low fantasy, but it did make me think about adding some. I mean, I could go with some like folklore type stuff. You know, the fountain of youth is a, is a great example. If players go there, they can actually receive boons of various kind, which I just think is really, really cool. Lots of charts for road encounters, and I think they're pretty useful. You know, anything from beggars to caravans to soldiers escorting diplomats. There's even a chart for hostile group reaction, and it has varied options for each of the reactions based on what you roll. They got a system for generating strongholds and other settlements like towns and cities. And I think, honestly, despite how complex it appears, it's actually really, really good. I think I'll actually design a keep on live stream at some point soon. So, uh, you know, feel free to come and watch. It'll probably be some point next week. Some of these charts are super interesting, like rolling on the city guard or border patrols, as well as encounters that can happen in settlements. There are also charts for making shops, which I'll be using, as well as taverns. I think the tavern generator is one of the best in this resource, as it allows you to define all the key features of a tavern very effortlessly. All in all, this book has to be one of the best kept secrets in D&D because I had no idea that it even existed until recently. 
Hopefully you've come away from you know, this video with some ideas and some thoughts. And I'd love to know what resources you'd recommend. So let us know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and give that video a like. I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. Until then.